Well, we're going to try something a little bit different tonight. This is a bit of a test, um, so bear with us. Um, tonight we're going to go through, or today, we're, um, wherever you're watching from, at whatever time, day or night, um, mm. we're going to go through uh, something called the Discovery Bible Method or Discovery Bible Study, or it's a tool. Um, mm. So essentially, um, it's a way of reading through uh, the Word of God and uh, the hope and intention is that as you do that, that you learn something that you hadn't learned before, uh, that you notice something that you hadn't noticed before, um, or you read something in a way that you hadn't interpreted before. So. You see, we've got a couple of spare seats here. So we're gonna invite uh, Emma and Matt uh, to join us, Mel and I, in this Bible study. Mm. Um, so, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Uh, I want to know, before we kind of get into the details of the Descri Discovery Bible study, mm. have you heard of it? Uh, yes. <laughs> I have, but I've only ever done it twice, I think, actually. And so it's a relatively new tool for me. Great. But um, I, was, I loved doing it those two times, so I'm really looking forward to this. Awesome. Yeah. Emma, Matt? Yeah, I'm similar. I've done it a handful of times and so enjoyed it each time. So, yeah, I'm just still learning and picking up the ropes, but mm. excited to do it again. Great. Mm. Yeah, I've done it once in a very large group context. Yeah. And so kind of, I would say I've done it. Yeah. Yeah. So have you ever done it in front of a camera like this? <laughs> Never, no. no. What you might see is a lot of silence, but that's okay because actually this is a study where mm. we are going through the Word of God together to learn. There's not been a lot of preparation in terms of how we're going to go through this study. So if you notice a bit of silence, um, maybe use that yourself as a time to think and reflect. And I'd encourage you to um, pick up your Bible and read through it with us. Mm. But before we go into that, we're going to look at Jonah. So, scale of one to ten, one <laughs> being Jonah. Who's Jonah? Never heard of Jonah. Who are we talking about here? Jonah Lomu? No. Uh, uh, verse of ten. It's my um, it's my Bible me memory verse of the week. Uh, I know it off by heart. Where are you? One to ten. Four. Six. Hopefully 10, but I'm going to say seven. I feel like I've been teaching in kids ministry for 20 something years. And so I feel like I've got Jonah down. <laughs> I know all about that big fish, you know. <laughs> well, we'll see. Um, <laughs> let me tell you a little bit about the, the method or the study so that you've got a bit of context about how it works. So think of ABC. So ask Bible commit. So the ask part won't really make sense to you at the start here because actually the ask comes about a week after you've done it once. Okay. The Bible part is what you're about to see. We're going to read through uh, Usually you start with a story. That's a, an easier way to go through mm -hmm. um, this method until you really understand it. Start with a story that you know quite well, hence why we've picked Jonah, although we've got varied numbers <laughs> of how well we know Jonah. Um, and then at the end of this study, we're hopefully going to commit to something from that for, for the week ahead. Uh, maybe it's something that we might do differently or we might tell somebody something that we've learned. Mm -hmm. um, and if we were to come back together next week, we would come to the ask, the A part of the ABC and say, how did you go? Did you, did you do what you said you were going to do? Did you talk to somebody about that? And part of the reason for doing that is it, it helps to embed the thing that you've learned. So it means that the study isn't just a one-off like right now, but it's something that you carry through um, for the rest of that week. So that's sort of something about the context, the method. So <laughs> it's a little different. One thing that we will do is that we'll read through this passage in Jonah. So we're going to read through Jonah 1. Then we're going to shut our Bibles and we're going to try and remember everything within that part that we read from start to finish and try and do it in the order. We'll open it back up, have a look through and, and see what things we might have missed or what we got um, right or wrong. It doesn't really matter, but it's just a way of reflecting and going, oh, I forgot about that. Um, 
And then we'll read it through again. And what we'll do is we'll pull out what we notice that it says about God. Mm -hmm. So all of the things that, what does it say about God? And it might be in that time that you hear a bit of silence because we're, we're thinking. And I'm going to ask Mel to write those things down as we go along. Then we go through it again and go, what does it say about us as humans? What does it say about people? What does it say maybe about me? Um, so that's part of that. Um, and then uh, from that, we will reflect on what we might want to do out of that. So that's that commit part. Yeah, great. So just to encourage, again, um, people who are watching from home, um, pull out your Bibles and read along with us. Mm. Should we get into it? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So we're looking at Jonah 1, and we'll read a few passages each, and we'll just go around until we finish that mm -hmm. part. Is that all right? Okay. Mel, do you want to kick off? Sure. So Jonah 1 verse 1, the word of the Lord God came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship board. Oh no, no, hold on. A ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went abroad and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. All of the sailors were afraid, and each cried out to his own God, and they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. But Jonah had go gone below deck, where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. The captain went to him and said, How can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. Maybe he will take notice of us so that we will not perish. Then the sailors said to each other, Come, let us cast lots to find who is responsible for this calamity. They cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. So they asked him, Tell us, who is responsible for making all this trouble for us? What kind of work do you do? Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? He answered, I am a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. This terrified them, and they asked, What have you done? They knew he was running away from the Lord because he had already told them so. The sea was getting rougher and rougher, so they asked him, What should we do to you to make the sea calm down for us? Pick me up and throw me into the sea, he replied, and it will become calm. Mm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. Instead, the men did their best to row back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew even wilder than before. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, Lord, do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man, for you, Lord, have done as you pleased. Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. At this the men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. Close it up, guys. Put your thumb in it, though. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what do, what do we remember? Starts with Jonah. And he was a son of a guy named Amittai. Mm, we, got, we got Mel to read all the hard words. <laughs> well, we weren't entirely sure how to pronounce Amittai, no. but we'll go with that. Um, God said to him, go down to Nineveh and tell the, those wicked people off, essentially. <laughs> yep. And he ran away. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, thank you. Did uh, he go directly to the ship then? I think so. Yeah. Um, boarded a ship. Yeah. To he must have told them that he was running away from God because he was said in brackets, didn't it? Yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, he went to sleep, did he? He went down, down yeah, below deck. deck. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. While there was a storm raging like that. It's, yeah. There's a storm raging. He's, He's asleep. asleep. <laughs> yeah, having a nap, deep sleep. This. The storm, then the storm comes, and it must have been quite a strong storm for the people to make a connection in between. You are running away from God, and there is a storm. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's they reasonably came. Reasonably significant. And, they came and spoke to him, right? And we said, "Who are you? What have you done? Yeah, where do you? What do you? What do you, come do from? you do? What work do you do? Yeah. What work do you do? Sometime in that, they've cast lots to see whose God yes. was responsible for causing oh, the storm. Good. And good I think that now. that's when it falls onto. Uh, yes, went on Jonah. Jonah. And then they go to him and ask him those questions. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And then he responds, um, "Throw me into the sea." Like yes. I've yeah, done. They asked, "How would we calm it?" Yeah. Yeah. And he says, "Throw me overboard." Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, and they don't want to do that, so they say, no, 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 we don't, we don't want to be responsible for taking someone's life. We're going to row back to sea, mm. row back to shore. They can't do it. And so then they do. They throw them overboard, mm. yeah. And the sea comes. And Ooh. then they are fearful. Mm. <laughs> yes. And then they worship, do they? Yeah. Have I made that up? No. <laughs> yeah, they worship they worship thy Lord. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's How right. do we do? <laughs> okay, we'll go through it again. Okay. Um, and uh, feel free to read some of the same parts or whatever happens. Sh- should we do read the same parts, you reckon? Go again. Yeah, okay. go again. <laughs> so, all right, Jonah 1 verse 1. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. All the sailors were afraid, and they cried out to his own God, and they threw Mm. the cargo into the sea. We missed that part to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone below deck where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. The captain went to him and said, how can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. Maybe he will take notice of us so that we will not perish. Then the sailors said to each other, come, let us cast lots to find out who is responsible for this calamity. They cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. So they asked him, tell us who is responsible for making all this trouble? What kind of work do you do? Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? He answered, I am Hebrew and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. This terrified them and they asked, what have you done? They knew he was running away from the Lord because he had already told them so. Mm. The sea was getting rougher and rougher. So they asked him, what should we do to you to make the sea calm down for us? Pick me up and throw me into the sea, he replied, and it will become calm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. Instead, the men did their best to row back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew even wilder than before. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, Lord, do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man, for you, Lord, have done as you pleased. Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. At this, the men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. Right. Mm. I mean, not bad. Mm. Not bad, but we did miss, which I think is actually quite interesting, is that they called um, on their own gods first. Mm. Like, so they obviously uh, worshipped other gods. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think we good point. That, yeah. yeah. I mean, we'd go through it a bit slower if we if we weren't doing this right now, but. Um, Pretty well done. Um, let's kind of go through it now and see. We don't. We won't read it again, but just kind of pull out in no particular order what things you notice and mm. hear about God, and that's what Mel's going to write down, and we'll kind of flick our eyes over that later. Yeah. Um, so, throw out. What do you notice about God? Uh, he spoke. He speaks. Mm-hmm. Spoke to Jonah. He speaks. Yeah. He commanded the wind and the sea. He has power mm. over nature. Yeah. Mm. You say wind and sea. Yeah. Um, he wanted to send a message to mm. people, so he sent someone yeah. to go and pass on a message. Mm. Yeah. He wanted to communicate with people. Yeah, I was going to say he, he gave direction. Yeah. Um, and also, I thought um, he was paying attention, like he he knew, because the the, the Ninevites, um, what does it say? They're evil, or they're what? Wicked. Came up, yeah, their wickedness came up before him. Mm-hmm. So he um, cared about the he cared about the hearts of the people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I noticed that God's like quite directly responsive to Jonah's actions and the actions of the people on the boat in the story. Mm-hmm. Um, he's very much present and yet responding to to the decisions that they make. Um, and I also noticed that that God is happy 
for there to be kind of um, these other people who didn't make Jonah's decision were impacted by his decision through right. through the weather, and they all turned out to be okay, but they were mm. quite directly <laughs> impacted by right. yeah, God's right. method to, to communicate and um, respond to Jonah's decision. Great observation. Mm. I mean, he's more powerful than any other god. The fact that they called on all their other gods um, and nothing happened, um, but he, again, maybe this comes back to the his power over the sea and the, the wind, but he, he was the only god that could mm. do something within that situation. Mm. Um, he is to be feared. At the end, yeah. it says that they greatly feared the Lord. Mm. And maybe that's fear as in revere, fear as in, in awe. Mm. That kind of feared? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's have a look. Yeah, we've got another no, one. No, no, you go. I wonder if we go through it now again, just flicking our our eyes through in the same kind of thing, but look at what does it say about people? What is it saying about us? What are some connections maybe that we uncomfortably make about ourselves in yeah. this? Are we disobedient? Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's going to say we yeah. have choice. Yes. Mm. Oh, yeah, but that's good, Emma. We have a choice. But yes, we're disobedient Yeah. at times. <laughs> Possibly fe fearful like the fact that he ran away, mm. trying to avoid conflict. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a good point because um, he was avoiding t taking the message to the Ninevites, right? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Mm. Uh, we get desperate for help. Like the, the sailors on the ship we had a sense of desper desperation, right? Mm. They knew that they couldn't fix it in and of themselves. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they, we look to, we look to bigger things than ourselves to solve problems, mm -hmm. but we also try and solve the problems ourselves, like rowing back to shore. That's really interesting, yeah. When, yeah, when we haven't got the response that we wanted, mm -hmm. we'll do it ourselves, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a degree in here of um, respect for life. Like they, the sailors didn't want to throw the sky over, over, <laughs> overboard. Yeah, their respect for their own life, wanted to save their life, um, but they also didn't want to, uh, to cost somebody else's life initially. Yeah, that's, yep. Yeah. So it's not all bad. However, they still threw a man overboard yeah. to save their own <laughs> life. I mean, at the end of the day, their own personal lives were had more value than somebody else's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of self-motivated decision-making yeah. going mm -hmm. on. And, and we see that God responds to that. Mm. And I think also the fact that God calls out, well, the wickedness of a whole city says something about human nature as well. That, that Wicked. So yeah, yeah, wicked. That Jonah was even called to go to the city because of the wickedness yeah. that was there. Yeah, great. But also what you've just said has alerted me to the fact, Matt, that um, something about humans is we partner with God. God uses us to bring his message, mm. right? Yeah. So we can be used by God. It'd be a yeah. mm. humans yeah. thing here. Um, mm. We can make, uh, we can offer sacrifices to God or vows to Him, worship Him. Yeah. That's something we can do. Yeah. Mm. Human sleep. <laughs> and we do love sleep. <laughs> Probably not what you're looking for. I think we write this down. Yeah, we, we love our sleep. That is so. true. Even when it's a raging yeah. storm. Yeah, I don't relate to that. There's no, no way I'd be sleeping in a storm. 
I'm wondering that what Jonah kind of slept boat in the this store. is that they would ro try and row back. <laughs> it's not the boat that I had. It's not the ferry. In <laughs> it's not. No. no. <laughs> You know, we could carry on, couldn't mm. we? Like, there's more in this than what we um, have even talked about now. I mean, what, what, this is a very quick version of this study, right? Um, yes. Are there things that sort of stand out for you, um, maybe in terms of going through it, uh, things that you didn't notice before or um, something different that you've got out of this, reading this chapter that you hadn't had got out before, if you hadn't maybe done this method. Mm. Well, I think the first thing that um, stuck out to me is, had I just approached this, like, just read it, oh, yes, and then, you know, kind of gone away, mm. is just how much you forget. Like, mm. even that very first time we read it through, we shut it, and we did roughly get there, but actually there is so much more to pull out of it when you have this kind of further look, mm. like, Yes, yeah. so much more than when we just originally went through. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I thought that um, what I love about this method of studying the Bible is that um, basic answers are just as good as the deep theological things that we try to pull out if we read the passage and have one takeaway. Sure. And when I look over this list or hear the answers, I think these are all so important and true of humans or true of God, mm. equal yeah importance that we probably skip over some of a lot of those things if we're trying to pull out one big idea. Mm -hmm. I like the the kind of communal nature of it. Like if, if I just read something and I'm told to come up with ideas, they generally take quite a while for me, but being able to feed off and be, mm -hmm. ah, yes, you said that, and that makes me think this. Um, yeah, I find yeah. that really helpful to get stuck more into the passage than mm -hmm. I would maybe on my own. Yeah. Yeah. Do you typically use this with a group? Or? Yeah, I mean, we've used this uh, in our Bible studies at our life group. And mm. I think what you're saying, Matt, is so true. It's, it's rich doing it with people, but actually you don't have mm. to. It's not only with people, um, with a group. I think when you're with a group, you do bounce ideas off each other. But mm. Emma, even as you're saying, it's just a, a sort of more structured way of reading through a passage mm -hmm. and delving into something or, or putting a, a lens over over the passage that you might not have done before if you just read it from start to finish. And I think what I love about it as well is that like I'm teaching you this method, but I'm, I'm not an expert in this passage of the Bible. You don't have to be an expert and you don't, you don't actually have to know more bits in this, in this. Like I haven't said to you, where does that connect to in, right. in other passages yeah. in the Bible? And what does that tell you about what, you know, some other part that we've been taught in here? Like you're just looking at one mm. passage and grabbing everything you can out of that. Mm. And the Bible is teaching, not me and not you. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so do you want to just read us those lists and then for us to have a think about what we might want to commit to? If we're thinking about the A, B, C, we've just done the B, we'll, we'll do the C. Sure. Um, and if there's something that triggers a, a thought or a commitment from this for this week. Okay. <laughs> Would you like me to hold it up like we're at school or are you happy for me just to read it out? Okay, so the first list, these are the kind of the things we pulled out, what the passage tells us about God, that he spoke, that he commanded the wind and the sea, so he has um, power over nature. Uh, he wanted to send a message to people, so he sent an instruction. He cared about the hearts of the people in Nineveh. Um, the people around Jonah were impacted by God, and God was the, the God. God was the only God who could respond, and he is to be feared. Mm -hmm. Those were the few things we wrote down. And the list uh, about what it tells us about us or humanity, uh, that we can be disobedient, but therefore we have a choice. Um, mm. that we can be fearful and avoid conflict. Uh, we're desperate for help from something, and sometimes we look outside ourselves, but sometimes we also try to fix things ourselves. Um, that we do have care for others, that um, a lot of our decision-making is self-motivated, uh, that we can have, tend to have hearts of wickedness, uh, that we can be used by God, that we can worship God, and that we sleep. <laughs> Found. Profound. Profound, yeah. Are we allowed to commit to sleep? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> no. I mean, if, if, there, if there's something um, that you want to share that you think, mm. hey, I'm, 
yeah, I might do something different or I'm going to tell somebody about this. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that comes to mind? I can kick us off. Yeah, go for it. The um, part around, uh, around choice, I think, kind of was interesting for me, I think. Um, and I sort of was connecting that into where I put my faith and uh, who I go to for um, like answers to prayer and mm. for, for wisdom. And actually, mm, I want to choose to go to God first. You know, let me not go to these other gods. I mean, you know, these other things that might solve problems for me. Let me mm. go straight to my God, their one true God, um, for wisdom, for guidance, for support, for nurturing, for um, peace. Um, yes. I'm going to get there eventually, so <laughs> why waste my time trying to <laughs> try and solve these problems elsewhere? And my choice is to go to God first. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I think what um, really struck me uh, was what you said, Matt, about um, how what Jonah chose to do with God's um, direction and question affected the people around him and negatively in that way. Um, mm. I thought, wow, that probably means that how we respond to God can affect the people around us positively. Right. And I'd love to be a person that the people around me are affected positively because right. of my relationship with God and what I choose to say yes to. Yeah. Um, so I think for me it... Um, yeah, it's kind of thinking outside myself and thinking about the people that um, are around me and mm. how my relationship with God can then have a flow and effect to, to them and the environments that I'm in. Mm. Yeah, thanks, Emma. That's great. Mm. Um, I think for me, my thing that I notice, yeah, is the, the directness and the way that God responds to Jonah. And I think that sometimes I can think, I can think that God is not as close as actually is it? He is, that God's right. kind of not external to my life, but that, that that I live my life and God kind of does his thing and they overlap in some places. But yeah. um, mm. And maybe in the context of prayer and my engaging with God in prayer, thinking that actually he might choose to respond actually to what I'm praying. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, that's just what I noticed and, and Mm. try and incorporate into my thinking Great. and prayer this week. It's cool. Mm. Yeah.